Monday afternoon, 3.49 in the afternoon. Today is just about wrapped up. I unfortunately haven't had much time to film, um, but right now I am just putting our capping solution on the DTF printer. If I could find the syringe that we typically use for that. Got it. So we're, I'm, right now I'm just putting in our capping solution for the DTF printer. Uh, this is something that we do at the end of each day just to kind of make the maintenance of the actual uh, print heads and the printer itself a lot easier on us. It just uh, kind of keeps the print head wet and subjected to moisture at all times. That way <clears throat> when we come in in the morning we don't have to run as many head cleanings to get the nozzle in uh, working order. We started using this probably like three, four weeks ago and I've been working really well with it. <clears throat> Got that all added though. Um, that's basically the only thing that we really have to do to turn down the printer, uh, put the capping solution in, turn the printer off to make sure that the heating elements are off and that will do it for that. But yeah, the printer today had a very busy day running all of our full color orders from the weekend. Right now, Michaela is currently uh, getting them all cut up and uh, individually ready to go for our customers. We also had a little bit of time, so we were able to get some of our sample uh, designs done. And we actually ended up choosing a new design for our samples and looking at them now, they look absolutely insane. I'm really happy that we chose to go with this design. Uh, I think the customers are gonna really enjoy it and I think it's a really good demonstration of the printer we also got the custom orders uh, for the full color printed, like I said, but then we also went ahead and got the custom screen printing order that we had to do today. It was 120 sheets. Uh, so we got that banged out on the automatic press today. Unfortunately, I wish I could have shown you guys more. It was just a crazy busy day and I forgot to pick up the camera. Um, but hopefully uh, tomorrow I'll have some more time to get uh, some footage for you guys. Tomorrow, looking at the calendar, I think we just have uh, some a couple orders that we have to deal with. So yeah, tomorrow, looking at the calendar, we just have a t-shirt order that we have to print, uh, a couple of full colors that came in today, and what is this? Oh yeah, we have a quite large uh, full color that we have to print tomorrow as well. No, 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 sorry, it's actually a screen print not a full color. Um, it's not that large. I think it's, it's actually only 150 sheets, um, 100 of one size, and then 25 of the others. So that's not gonna be that bad tomorrow. Make sure you guys don't go anywhere if you guys are interested in seeing us get busy on that. Afternoon, guys, 3.45 in the afternoon. Uh, as you guys are probably seeing now, uh, we printed the uh, half of the order that we had to print in white already on the automatic, got those all knocked out, did the color changes, got the squeegee cleaned and ready to go, and did the test print for the black print. Everything came out good, so that job is ready to go. We have the sheets all counted out. Got uh, this design printed. It's just uh, one design on the sheet. And then we also have this one printed which was a uh, toddler size and then, uh, no, a youth size and then two toddler size on the same sheet. Got those two printed in white. Now we have to do 50 more of them in black for each. So we have 50 of this one, 50 of this one to do, and we will be good to go on those. Today has been a uh, fairly uh, relaxed day. We went to Aviva earlier today and got some t-shirts that we have to press once we wrap up the screen printing order. And then we also got these green t-shirts that are for another order that I'm gonna to have to press tomorrow. Uh, I have the screen burned for those. So we'll get that wrapped up tomorrow. But yeah, Michaela just finished uh, cutting the full color DTF transfers. We got all of our full color orders that were placed yesterday printed. We also got the ones that were placed today all printed. So that is good. Going to be getting our transfers out to our customers a little bit early than expected. But we also have the uh, designs that we need to press onto the t-shirts in that roll. So we're gonna have to get it uh, ready to go, cut up for our customers, and then uh, get going on this screen printing order. I will uh, go ahead and set up a time lapse for you guys so you can see what we got going on again while we print these blacks.
All right, guys, 5.10 in the afternoon. Got everything we needed to wrapped up. Got the packages all packaged up and uh, everything's ready to go. We have a couple pickup orders that have to go tomorrow, but got the full colors all packaged, the screen print transfers, and we also got the shirts pressed. That's going to do it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. I know that there wasn't much content today. Hopefully tomorrow I can get some more shots. I know I said that on Monday, but uh, tomorrow will be a new day. What's up guys, 2.30 Wednesday afternoon. Today has been a long day. Already ran to GSG, got the uh, screens that we needed to get for the pre-burned orders that I think I was talking about yesterday. Also got the uh, transparencies for today's custom screen printing orders burned and drying. These are the two screens that I was talking about, uh, the pre-burned screens that uh, the customers ordered, just the screens themselves so they can screen print themselves. But um, man guys, today, I don't even know. It's not even just today. It has been long dealing with some of these customers. Um, so on Friday, Michaela came um, and told me, she's like, okay, so don't be upset, but we got a negative review. I already read it. I'm not sure what more we could have done to fix it. <sighs> so I was already, I'd already like uh, tuned out for the day, stopped thinking about work, was getting looking forward to the weekend, stuff like that. And then uh, she came out and told me this, oh, well, whatever, got to deal with the problems as they come up. So I uh, went online, checked out the review, see what was going on with it. And uh, yeah, sure enough, we had a one-star review from one of our customers. And uh, the review said, I was kind of disappointed that I spent more than $40 on two customized DTF prints, but it was something for my nephew's birthday. But I didn't notice until after I pressed them that, my hat, that they had my name so small on the side of the print that it stuck to my shirts. Yes, we, we print your name on the transfer sheets next to your design. Like, yes, that, we do that. I tried my best to get them off, but I did get some, but it's still visible. If you purchase prints, make sure you cut it off or check to see if it's there because it's so small, you can barely see it pressing. Now, hang on, let me go get you one so that I can show you exactly what she's talking about. Okay, I got one here. So this is uh, what the customer was talking about in their review. All right, so this is a gang sheet that we would typically send our customers. And then right here, or, you know, right there, we print the customer's name. This not only helps us make sure that we stay organized, but it also might help the customer because not only do we put their name, but we put what line item it, it is on the order. So I guess the, the person in this review didn't see that. And then they pressed their name onto the shirt. And because of that, they gave us a one-star review. That's great. And uh, yeah, on add, add insult to injury there, then the customer also complained that our price was too high, even though they're the ones who only ordered two sheets and then had to pay for shipping on those two sheets. So of course it's going to be about $40. Not only that, but then the customer also requested two-day shipping. So literally half of the order, because we charge $20 for flat rate two-day shipping, Half of the order was to shipping, and she was still complaining about the price. Oh my gosh, guys, that's, oh, this stuff has been long, man. I don't even know, like, what we could have done to prevent this. Maybe, like, putting something on the instruction sheet that says, like, hey, we printed your name on the transfer sheet. Make sure you look out for that. That would be easy for us to do, but I just really, I gave people the benefit of the doubt, and I didn't think that they were so... Um, like didn't, I don't know, clueless for lack of a better word. Like it's right there, dog. If you look at the transfer sheet before you print, before you apply it, you'll see it, man. How do you miss it? This is the first time something like this has ever happened. Um, we have uh, 1,469 reviews. And of that, we have had one one-star review on our screen print transfers, one literally one and it was from the very beginning of our business like oh my goodness guys this is it is long man how uh, so we had that that happened on friday 
And then just a couple minutes ago, if you guys know, we sell our pre-burned screens. I looked at our reviews to another negative review. This one was from a person who purchased a pre-burned screen ready to go. And then here's what the review said, leaving two stars because I ordered a screen and it came in almost three weeks after I purchased. No issue there. I used it and accidentally let the paint dry on it. Mistakes were made and I went for, to the seller for help as to how to unclog the screen. He was using water-based ink. The seller referred me to something that just ended up ruining my screen even more and now I have to buy an entire new screen for the same project. Complete setback. Wouldn't recommend for help. Bro, oh man. It's just like, what do, what do I do in this situation, man? The customer literally admitted in the review to clogging the screen himself because he was using water-based ink. And then the customer came to me for help. I offered a solution that we use in our shop. We use 480 screen opener on our emulsion, the same emulsion that I sent to the customer. And apparently, because we made that recommendation, we now earned a two-star review. I guess the moral of the story here is don't make recommendations or try and help your customers. Is that, is that the takeaway that I'm supposed to get here? Because like, what do I do here, man? This is, this is insane. Oh my goodness, guys. Sorry for the venting. It's just like, this is, this is how we provide for ourselves, for our family. And then it's just like people, they get so angry at, at like whatever, they get so angry in the process that they're consumed in. And then they just look for somebody to take it out. And unfortunately, I'm right in their crosshairs when, when that time comes. Um, yeah, man. And it just sucks because these two orders from the two negative reviews, they make up a tiny, a tiny fraction of our revenue. And we're having to do, and these, these two problems, like both of these orders combined are like $140, man. Oh my gosh, $140 and that cost us two negative reviews. I was talking to Michaela about this. I really, I don't know what to do, man, because it's just like, it's kind of like the 80-20 rule where the majority of your problems will come from a small percentage of your customers and, or your sales. I don't know, man. It's got me thinking like maybe we shouldn't be working with, with smaller customers because it appears that the problems do come from the smaller customers. We, we have some clients that order $1,000 orders. We don't hear a peep from them. They are perfectly fine. They get their transfers. They press them. We don't hear a peep. But then you get these customers, $40 orders, they're complaining, they're leaving negative reviews, $100 pre burn screen order, you're having to spend time on customer service helping them. They leave a negative review like, what do we do in this case, man? This is, this is wild. I reached out to the customer on Friday over the weekend um, and I didn't hear anything back from the customer. That's cool. Tried to like reach out, make things right. Uh, this was with the customer that um, transferred the name to the t-shirt. I was like, we'll just reprint it for you. You know now that we print your name, so hopefully you can cut that off before you transfer it. Um, and then didn't hear a reply back from them until Tuesday. And on Tuesday, they're like, okay, I'll accept the reprint. Um, and I was like, okay, cool, we'll get right on that. In the meantime, would you mind like updating your review to reflect your current situation? Um, didn't think it was that much of an ask to ask her to. She's getting a reprint at no charge, no, no cost to ship it to her, no charge at all to her. Um, asked her to update her review, radio silence. And then this, uh, this person with the pre burn screen, they left their review and then within, I kid you not, like six minutes between they left their review and I reached out to them again. So trying to make things right with these customers, Hopefully they'll end up changing their reviews. Um, hopefully everything ends up getting rectified for both of them because obviously we don't want our customers having bad experiences when ordering from us. But it's also like we can't, we can't just be giving the customer whatever they want under the threat that they'll leave a negative review. Like that's not how the world works. Um, and some people really think that's how it works. If they just threaten to leave a negative review, they get whatever they want. Um, I'm sure you guys who own small businesses have dealt with something like this before. 
I, I know hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from. And uh, if you guys have any tips at all, please drop them in the comments. Oh, the other thing, the other thing. This is completely, uh, I know. The guy with the pre brain screen, in his review, he said that it took three weeks for delivery. Let's go ahead and check the math on that. The customer ordered on April 5th and then got his screen delivered to him on April 14th. Does, does, that, does that add up to over three weeks? Because by my math, that's barely over a week. My goodness, guys. I don't even, uh, all right, rant over. 1.10 in the afternoon, Thursday at the shop. Been at the shop since seven this morning, just getting some work done on the computer. I got uh, a couple of different things uh, set up for the website, actually, that I kind of want to talk to you guys about, um, which we'll get into later. But right now, Michaela is currently cutting up our full color designs, our full color custom designs that we printed today on the DTF printer, just getting those all set up. Um, but yeah, today has been uh, fairly uh, laid back, just working on the computer, getting everything ready to go for our auto order that we have to print later today. I got the screens burned, both of the screens. We have 60 sheets on one and then 50 sheets on the other. The color I actually need to look at because I don't know if I need to clean the squeegee or not. Um, either way, if it's white or black, the squeegee currently is on black, so we'll just print uh, the order that is black if there is one. And uh, we'll print that first and then switch to the squeegee to white, print the other order if it happens to be white. Like I said, I still need to look at that though, just to make sure. Um, also, I just realized what Michaela was doing. So getting our full color DTF transfers, the custom ones that we had to do today, all rolled up. They already came off of the printer. Pretty light day on the DTF printer, all things considering. Usually it goes till probably about 3, 4 p.m. Um, and today it wrapped up at 1.15, so can't complain about that. The ones on the ground here are uh, mess ups, unfortunately. That's why they are on the ground. But um, just a few more in that roll that we have to get rolled up and shipped to our customers. And then we will go ahead and get started on the auto. What I wanted to mention to you guys and kind of talk about is what you guys think about um, guest posting. So guest posting is a pretty common SEO strategy, I guess you could say, where you basically um, pay to have your blog posts or whatever on different sites. And then in, within the blog post, you usually have like one or two links back to your main site. Um, and that can just kind of help with SEO. It'll, especially if you get this posted on like high domain rank authority websites, like really big websites like, um, I don't know, CNN, New York Times, Microsoft, um, just like big websites. You, you, you guys know it when you, when you hear it. Um, that would be even better since they have very high domain authority with Google and a link from them obviously is much more valuable than a link from um, 123 transfers ABC Wisconsin.com or like some insert random website here. So basically the name of the game is you want to have um, high quality links from high quality sites pointing back to your site and one of those links is far more valuable than 50 to 100 random spammy websites and just websites that aren't of the best quality and unfortunately Google knows which websites are the best quality so it's pretty hard to pull the wool over on them and uh, try and gain a rankings edge by just posting your guest posts on like spammy websites low domain rank sites and low authority websites so that's uh, kind of what I have been working on this afternoon uh, trying to kind of dip my toe into the kind of realm of guest posting in general um, and I met a couple of sellers on Fiverr who offer guest posting as a service. Um, and I got in contact with a couple of them earlier this week. And today I actually put in my first order for one. So I'm going to be posting a blog post on marketwatch.com if you guys are familiar. It's not exactly like the best fit niche wise because that also can play into it. Google cares like um, where the link is coming from. So like if you're a tech website and you get a site from a crafting website or so on and so on. That's not necessarily the best, but you can kind of overcome that if the domain authority is high enough. So that's what kind of I, I got going on with marketwatch.com. It's basically a website to, dedicated to business stocks and like trading stocks, stuff like that. But I'm kind of thinking that I might be able to find an edge on like the side hustle side and um, write a blog post about side hustles creating your own custom t-shirt business as a side hustle 
and post it to marketwatch.com. Marketwatch.com has a domain authority of 92 out of 100, so that's insanely good. For example, my AMS transfers website has a domain authority of seven. Um, so a link from them would do good numbers to our SEO, our organic rankings in Google, and uh, stuff like that. So we're gonna give, go ahead and give it a try with marketwatch.com, posting our first guest post on that. We're only allowed two backlinks back to our website on it, so going to have to um, optimize those very well in the article so that they hopefully lead to some good uh, interaction. But yeah, guys, I'm excited to see how this goes. If you guys have any experience with guest posting um, in general, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. It feels like, for just from what I've seen, like in the screen printing, custom t-shirts, um, screen print transfers for sure, DTF transfers, like it's all basically focused on the product. And there isn't many companies who specialize on like the service that they provide. It's basically a race to the bottom for price and so on and so on. Um, and kind of jumping off of that, not a lot of people are really working on their SEO for uh, p competitors in this niche. Even like large sites, uh, if you do competitive analysis on their backlinks, where they got them from, it's not, not the best sources. So um, with all this to say, I, my main point is basically, it feels like if you just do a good amount of the correct work in the screen printing t-shirt, the custom t-shirt business niche, that you can far exceed your competitors because just not a lot of people are really working on it. Um, if they do do SEO, they're mainly focused on on-page SEO and not stuff like this where they're actually trying to go out and get backlinks to their website. That's what we got going on. Uh, that's what I was working on this afternoon, giving, uh, getting everything all set up for that. I still have to actually write the blog post. Um, the person on Fiverr who I'm working with uh, does offer to write the posts for you. Um, but I mean, I don't know, I'm more comfortable with my writing style. I feel like I best know how to sell my product and um, I'm gonna go ahead and write my own article and send that to him to uh, guest post on marketwatch.com. I'll let you guys know uh, what happens with that, what kind of results we see. If we do see an organic traffic increase, that would be awesome, but I will let you guys know throughout all of the journey through this, if we continue to do it, stuff like that. So if you are interested in this, learning how to get more customers organically into your t-shirt business, uh, please leave a subscribe, hit the big red button down below, subscribe to the channel. There will be more content like this, trying to get you to organically get more customers through your business so that you're not having to pay Google for paid ads, you're not having to pay Facebook, and uh, more money in your pocket at the end of the day. So I just looked at the order. It is black ink for the screen on the left. We're going to uh, go ahead and start with that one since, like I said, the squeegee is already set up for black. And then this one is white ink, so we will switch the squeegee color, do a color change, and then throw this order up and get that one printed in white. Let's go ahead and get the auto torn down because I still have the order that we were printing yesterday afternoon up on here. So just got to go ahead and take the squeegee and flood bar off, take the screen off, scoop all the ink, and then load up the new screen and reverse the process that I just said. Put the flood bar on, put the squeegee back on, and uh, do a test print to see how this goes. I'll go ahead and set up a time lapse for you guys. Get this going, bang this order out. clock 
got all of the screen print orders that we had to print today all wrapped up. Mikhail is currently packaging up our full color orders and getting those ready to be sent out. The one from earlier turned out great and the other one we unfortunately already packaged up so I can't show you those. But these are the uh, custom full colors that Michaela has yet to package up. These are the samples that we have to take home to my father. He's the one who cuts up and assembles all of our sample boxes for us. And then the orders that Michaela's currently packaged up. But uh, that's going to do it for us today. Today is uh, going to be an early one for the first time in some time. The past couple of days we've been leaving around 5 and the traffic has been absolutely terrible. So. This will be great. Hopefully there's no traffic. To Friday afternoon, got to the office today at about 7.15 this morning. Um, had a uh, sort of clerical morning. Uh, just chatted with Michaela on uh, what we had to do today. Got everything all set up. Today's gonna be a fairly um, just gotta stick to the schedule day. Um, have to start the, today uh, reclaiming some screens because I'm all out of the automatic size screens. Got to get those reclaimed so that I can coat them later this afternoon because we do have a screen printing order that we need them for. After that, got to run over to Aviva. When I get back from Aviva, um, we actually have to go to Aviva because one of the orders that we sent out earlier this week, um, when I was inputting the order into the system, I put the design in for an adult t-shirt, however when I copied the design over for a youth t-shirt I never changed the size for the design and it ended up cutting off part of the design on the t-shirt. And unfortunately the order is consisting of two adult sizes and then ten youth, so the majority of the order had the messed up design. Unfortunately, um, or fortunately, the customer was cool about it. We're gonna go ahead and get this reprinted and shipped to them with overnight shipping so that they can still get it in time for their daughter's birthday party. Um, but just shoot, man, little mistakes like this uh, really shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be happening. We should, we should have a system in place for better catching each of these problems because the adult shirts were fine, but then neither Michaela nor I noticed that um, the youth shirts were missing the L. So I think we just gotta focus a little bit more on quality control and making sure that every item that leaves the shop is completely 10 out of 10 perfect and we can uh, kind of avoid problems like this in the future. But that's why I gotta go to Aviva, grab some more uh, youth shirts for this order, get that reprinted. And then when I get back from Aviva, like I said, I'm gonna coat the screens that I just reclaimed. After that, I gotta post to social media. Uh, print out our customer transparencies as well as the transparency that we have for the custom screen printing order that we have to do on the auto later. Uh, press the T's in between that while uh, the transparencies are printing. Um, go ahead and press the T's that I was just talking about. And then after we're done pressing the T's on the heat press, we will switch gears to printing the screen printing order on the auto. It's going to be a busy day. We really got to stick to the schedule. If we stick to the schedule, everything will be fine. We'll get out of here on time. But if we don't stick to the schedule, we're going to run late. And um, no one wants to run late on a Friday. Just trying to get home, enjoy our weekend. I still have to edit the video that you're watching. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on Friday. Let's go ahead and stop procrastinating, put on a book, and get to reclaiming these screens. I actually just finished up the book Traffic Secrets by Russell Brunson. Uh, I just finished that up a couple, like an hour ago, and I think the next book that I'm going to end up starting is, he has two other books in the series, he calls it, Dot Com Secrets, which is basically optimizing your uh, website and landing pages to... Um, to kind of keep the traffic that you're sending to your website and keep them engaged and um, trying to inevitably buy your product. But then they also ha he also has a book called Expert Secrets and he described this one as um, mastering the art of what to say in your funnels to convert online visitors into lifeline customers, lifelong customers. And then the description for dot-com secrets, the one that I just read was for expert secrets. So the description for dot-com secrets is master the science of funnel building to grow your company online with sales funnels. So yeah, I think uh, dot-com secrets is more of how to actually build your websites so that they can convert. And then expert secrets is more of how to really fine tune your website to optimize for conversions. 
Honestly, I think dot-com secrets would be the better start just based on what, I've, what I'm talking about right now. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy this one on Audible. And then I can start listening to that while I reclaim the screens. Just bought the book. Let's go ahead and get this downloading. Move the screens. We got the screens uh, over here and I actually have to uh, go through all of them and take the excess ink off of the screens and then we'll be ready to go ahead and start reclaiming them. So let's get started on this. Happy Friday, guys. All right, guys, some time has passed since I last recorded my clip. I uh, got the screens all reclaimed, got them coated and already dried. I already went ahead and burned the screen for the custom screen printing order that we have to get done today. That is just, man, this Phoenix number has called me a few times. I think I'm gonna answer it because I think it's DTF Superstore. Okay, I don't know who that was because when I answered it, they just hung up. So probably gonna end up getting a lot more spam phone calls now, but that's all right. So where was I? Um, went to Aviva, got the t-shirts that we needed to for this order. Um, it's just white t-shirts, so they definitely had them in stock. They had plenty of stock. Aviva was crazy busy. I guess everybody needs to go get t-shirts for the weekend or something like that. I don't really know, but it was packed. Got to get these t-shirts all um, pressed, and then we can move on to the screen printing order that we have to run on the auto. Um, but like I said, I was going to start that book, um, Dot Com Secrets, and man, guys, it has been, like this author, Russell Branson, Brusson, Russell uh, Branson, I don't know exactly what his last name is. Um, he, I don't know, there's a few people who have really managed to convince me in business before um, with like their whole spiel, their, their shtick, you know. Um, and like obviously they are selling something at the end of the day, but they do offer a lot of value and knowledge. And a couple of those people who I've come across so far uh, in my career, in my uh, dealings with business have been Gary Vaynerchuk. I, I've talked about him a few times before on the channel. That guy offers a ton of different valuable tips completely for free on his YouTube channel. And then he also has the upsells. And a second person that previously has been that for me has been Brian Dean. He is um, the owner of the blog Backlinko. And again, if you guys are longtime viewers, you already know that name too. That name should be pretty synonymous with the channel at this point. But Brian Dean, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I think honestly soon to be this Russell Branson guy, they both really have a way of explaining things that just like really sticks with me and that I understand and they put it into real world concepts that are easy to grasp. I don't know, there's something valuable about the people that can do that um, and make complex technical topics easy to digest and understand like that. So anyways, this Russell Branson guy, uh, he also wrote the uh, dot com secrets and he also wrote the book that I just finished today traffic secrets so I uh, started reading dot com secrets while I was reclaiming the screens like you saw and um, it is a super solid book so far I'm only like an hour into the audiobook but if you guys are interested in learning more about um, how to maximize the customers that come to your website and basically just really how to make the most of the customers that you're getting because uh, the way that he puts it, again, I'm not going to do any, I'm not going to do justice. If you are interested in these topics, go ahead and read the book yourself. Um, but he says, basically, that you want to um, provide your customer with more value so that not only you can charge more because, one, you're providing the customer with more value, but then also you can spend more to acquire that customer because you're going to be getting more value or more money from the customer over time. So... What, what that basically means is you want to try and get the customer um, in your net, let's say. So once you have the customer in your net, you can, and you can deploy a number of different ways to try and uh, market to them, to try and sell to them, to try and get them to buy your products, use your service, whatever it is. So once you have them in your net, you basically just want to then get the customer into your net. So 
Um, once you can get them into your net, you can then upsell them up your what Brian, or what Russell uh, Brunson, Branson Brunson I still don't know calls the value ladder, and you want to get them in at the cheapest, lowest denomination, broadest thing possible. So. Um, you want to get them in, even if you do lose money on that initial purchase, you still got them into your net and you can then further upsell to them with different products over time because you have them in your net. So what I took from that is basically I need to um, get more customers into my net so that I can push them further up my value ladder and my value ladder being um, custom transfers, um, stuff like that. So. For example, here, let me try and give this, break this down into an example for myself. Um, my number one thing to get them into the, to the value ladder would be our sample boxes, our free sample boxes. You, a customer can go onto our website, request the sample box completely for free, and um, we get their address information, we get their email, we get their name, and we ask them a number of different questions before we actually end up sending out that sample box for them. So. We get the customer into our net via the free sample box. It's really broad because um, everybody likes free stuff. It's completely free, so there's basically no obligation to the customer. And I get a whole bunch of different data on that customer. So once I get them the free sample box, I can go ahead, I can go ahead and then maybe send them a couple of different marketing emails related to our pre-made transfers because maybe they're just getting into screen print transfers, uh, DTF transfers, making their own t-shirts in general, so they might not have their own design that they can order for customs. So I could push them to our pre-made transfers. So they come in with the sample boxes and then I market them with the pre-made transfers. Once they have ascended the value ladder to our pre-made transfers, I can then continue to market to them and maybe market our custom transfers which have the most margin to us. So they can come in at the sample box, start off with our pre-mades, and then if that goes well for them, we can convert them over to our customs. And each different step along the way, you will lose people from your net. Not everybody is going to move along every step in the value ladder, but basically having that value ladder and having something to continue to push your customers up into higher margin products is what you want. So another example is, say you're running a Google ad for uh, screen printed t-shirts. You're running that Google ad, the customer comes to your website, they leave, that's it. You still paid Google $2 for the click, but you will never see that customer, hear from them again because they clicked off your website. What you could do then is create some sort of um, click funnel or landing page to that customer to try and get that customer's information. And then once you have that customer's information, you own th that customer. That's a customer that you own and you can continue to market to later on. So they click a Google ad, they fill out a form, you get their information, you can continue to market to them versus they click come from a Google ad for custom screen printing, they click off and they're gone, but you still had to pay Google. I hope that this is uh, at all valuable. I know that this is basically just one long spiel. This is um, what I have taken from the book, and if you are interested in learning more about these kind of topics, I would highly suggest checking out the book. It's Dotcom Secrets by Russell Branson. I'll put something up on the screen. And he has basically three books in the series, Traffic Secrets, Expert Secrets, and Dotcom Secrets. I definitely will be checking out Expert Secrets once I read Dotcom Secrets. Um, I don't know, like I said, this Russell Brunson, Branson, I really, I should figure that out. I'll figure, figure it out right now. I'm pretty sure it's Branson, but let's figure out once and for all at the end of the tangent. That's helpful, isn't it? Russell Brunson, all right. Russell Brunson, not Branson. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, check out Russell, Bruss, Russell Brunson's book. My goodness. Let's go ahead and get these finished up. Um, I think that I wasn't even paying attention while I was filming this clip. I was too busy trying to explain everything to you guys that I forgot to do the last two t-shirts. So let's go ahead and get these taped on there and we can start heat pressing them.
property in the afternoon. Got all of the orders wrapped up. Got the screen printing order on the auto all finished. Everything turned out great. Got the full color orders cut, packaged, and shipped. Just gotta get these dropped off to the post office, get them dropped off to UPS, and that is gonna do it for this week. Man, these weeks are flying by. It feels like uh, it was just yesterday that we had to come in on Monday and give the shop a clean, which the shop definitely needs another clean next Monday. So if you guys are interested in watching more of the small business journey that we are on here at AMS Transfers, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. It's the big red button. It would really mean a lot to me. It'll help grow the channel and I would appreciate your subscription. So with that guys, that's gonna do it for this week. I will see you guys next week for week 20.